They're undeniably bad, but they sure are good at it. Hey guys, it's Phoebe with Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie villains of the decade. We're taking a look at the best villains to have appeared in films between 2010 and 2019. You will see human and monster villains here, but no animated ones. Let's get to it. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10, Joker, Arthur Fleck. Joker. When you bring me out, can you introduce me as Joker? The Joker is one of the most iconic villains of any medium. With this film, he proved that he doesn't need Batman to maintain that status. Though 2019's Joker had its detractors, few critics could find fault with Joaquin Phoenix's brilliant performance. You don't listen, do you? Now, mental illness is a tough subject to tackle, especially when the character in question is supposed to be a villain. There's always a fear of demonizing mental illness. When I was a little boy and told people I was gonna be a comedian, everyone laughed at me. But Phoenix and director Todd Phillips did a solid job of making this character at once sympathetic and someone who lives up to his villainous legacy. When Arthur Fleck gives in to his worst inclinations and embraces his Joker persona, he becomes an agent of chaos and evil, and an unforgettable one at that. Number nine. Calvin Candy, Django Unchained. Well, come on over. We got us a fight going on that's a good bit of fun. Like Joaquin Phoenix, Leonardo DiCaprio is considered among the most talented actors of his generation. Who else could take a role like Jordan Belfort and simultaneously make him both reprehensible and so magnetically charming? As DiCaprio had already proven a year earlier, however, he's every bit as capable of turning off that charm. Don't lay your palm flat on that tabletop! If you lift those palms off that turtle shell tabletop, Mr. Pooch is gonna let loose with both barrels that sawed off. Playing against type as 19th century slave owner Calvin Candy, DiCaprio wholly commits to the sadistic, hate-filled, and thoroughly repulsive villain. His bigotry and racism know no bounds, but as detestable as Candy is, the manner, swagger, and quirks with which DiCaprio imbues the character makes him the sort of villain we love to hate. The fact that Leo didn't get an Oscar nomination for this scene-stealing performance is baffling. You do not have anything to drink. Can I get you a tasty refreshment? Yes, I'll have a beer. I want a bar. Number eight, Lord Voldemort, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part two. Before he was brought to the big screen, Voldemort had already been established as one of the greatest villains in modern literature. As such, the risk of the live-action interpretation of the character falling short of fan expectations was incredibly high. But Rafe Fiennes pulls it off magnificently. From this day forth, you put your faith in me. For many fans, it was as if the Dark Lord had stepped right off of the page and onto the screen. In the final installment of this epic series, Fiennes holds nothing back, fully inhabiting the role. His Voldemort is cruel and imposing. There's danger behind every word he delivers, an inherent volatility that's terrifying to behold. You've been a good and faithful servant, Severus, but only I can live. And yet he's also charismatic in a way that makes you understand how he seduced so many to his side. Number seven, Eric Killmonger Stevens, Black Panther. Nah. I'm your king. It's not the first time we've said it, but the MCU, for all its strengths, has really struggled to bring compelling villains to the big screen. With Killmonger, however, they absolutely hit it out of the park. Black Panther was the first comic book superhero movie to be nominated for Best Picture at the Academy Awards. And while there were many contributing factors, Killmonger felt like a key part of the equation. I lived my entire life waiting for this moment. Played expertly by Michael B. Jordan, Killmonger is a fully fleshed out villain who, despite his lethal methods, has relatable and sympathetic motivations. You will destroy the world, Wakanda included. The world took everything away from me. Everything I ever loved. He's a character with real emotional depth and a powerful backstory. And when you add that to his physicality, you've got a villain worthy of our hero in every regard. Just bury me in the ocean. 
with my ancestors that jumped from the ships because they knew death was better than bondage. Number six, Terrence Fletcher, Whiplash. Down the line, trumpets, bar seven and eight. Three, four. Most of the villains we've discussed up until this point have been notably larger than life characters. But Terrence Fletcher is just a music teacher and conductor. He doesn't weave any diabolical plots or have ambitions of world domination. And that's part of what makes him such a standout villain. He's the sort of antagonist that any one of us could encounter in our own academic or professional careers. Rushing or dragging. Rushing. So you do know the difference! As Fletcher, J.K. Simmons plays a master emotional manipulator, preying on the vulnerability and ambitions of his students on his quest for musical perfection. He's cruel and violent, and yet he's fundamentally human and not without sentiment or honor. Like so many real-world villains, he doesn't see himself as one. I earned that part. You never earned anything. God, you are a self-righteous prick. Number five, Amy Elliott Dunn, Gone Girl. There are so many ways in which this film could have gone wrong. The manipulative, crazy woman is a tired trope and often serves as a lazy stand-in for actual character development. Amy checks a lot of the boxes traditionally associated with this archetype, but she's anything but two-dimensional. I've killed for you. Who else can say that? Despite all the mystery initially surrounding Amy's disappearance, this film takes us deep inside her mind, inviting us to understand what makes this character tick. The fact that she's an unreliable narrator only adds to her appeal. Start with the fairy tale early days. Those are true, and they're crucial. You want Nick and Amy to be likable. After that, you invent. Conniving, unflinching, and brilliant, Amy is a villain worthy of a greater hero than she ever faces. And so in the end, she wins. This is undeniably Rosamund Pike's career-defining role. When two people love each other and can't make that work, that's the real tragedy. Number four, the Armitage family. Get out. Picture this, you meet the girl of your dreams and everything seems to be going great. After a few months, she asks you to meet her parents and you go along with it. The next thing you know, they're trying to sell your body to the highest bidder. The Armitage family is deeply racist, take the term manipulative to sickening new heights and can only be described as evil through and through. You can't stop the inevitable. And who knows? Maybe one day you'll enjoy being members of the family. Theaters saw no shortage of memorable villains over the last decade, but what really makes the Armitages stand out is that for all intents and purposes, they're just your average family next door. They pose as open-minded and progressive, but behind closed doors, they indulge in humanity's darkest, cruelest, and most selfish of impulses. Fire. It's a reflection of our own mortality. We're born, we breathe, and we die. Number three, It, Pennywise the Dancing Clown. It and It Chapter Two. <laughs> it is a terrifying cosmic being who most commonly takes the form of a sinister clown. Need we say more? Okay, It is a shapeshifter and a reality manipulator who knows how to appeal to the good-natured sympathies of children so that he can eat them, but only after seasoning their meat with fear. Well, though, Downey, yes, we do. <laughs> we never dreamed that someone could hold a candle to Tim Curry's take on the titular terror, but Bill Skarsgård has turned in the performance of a lifetime to make a whole new generation of cinemagoers terrified of this monstrous villain. The horror genre isn't short on horrific creatures, but with his unique quirks and the clear joy he takes in his work, Pennywise is cut from a different cloth. Hello. Number two, Kylo Ren, the Star Wars sequel trilogy. Show me again the power of the darkness. No one will ever top Darth Vader in terms of iconic Star Wars villains, but since he only made a brief, albeit badass cameo in Rogue One, it would feel like cheating to include him on this list. In Kylo Ren, however, Vader has a worthy heir and successor. There's too much Vader in him. Ben Solo feels like Vader's internal struggle between the dark and light sides of the Force personified. He's a slave to his emotions, both positive and negative. In many ways, he feels like the sort of complex, tortured character that George Lucas was trying to craft with Anakin Skywalker in the prequels. No.
A powerful force user, played with nuance by Adam Driver, Kylo Ren does the franchise proud, without feeling like a retread of old ground. The Sith, the Jedi, the Rebels, let it all die. Before we unveil the number one baddie of the decade, let's see some honorable mentions. Once again, we send off my war rig to bring back gasoline from Cast Town and bullets from the bullet farm. Where's your kid now, Sheriff? No. No! You see, we are the last two rats. We can either eat each other Hmm. Or eat everyone else. You breathing? <laughs> A little bit, yeah. Blood and blade. D. The hunt begins. Tether yourself to the table. Addy, don't do it. Maybe I should put something off of you. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Thanos – Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame before the Mad Titan took center stage, Loki was the reigning villain of the MCU, and so he deserves a nod. Now on to Thanos. Like many of history's greatest villains, he firmly believes that his devastating methods are entirely justifiable from a utilitarian standpoint. He's the hero of his own story. Because you murdered half the planet. A small price to pay for salvation. Thanos is a formidable physical threat, but his greatest strength is his unflinching resolve. A complex and charismatic villain, Thanos raised the bar in multiple ways. The MCU is the most ambitious world-building ever seen in film, and after looming over it for years, Thanos shook this universe to its core. I will shred this universe down to its last atom. He's a villain without precedent, whose status is further elevated by the magnitude of the cinematic event in which he appeared. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.